What's up? My name is Technobi, here for Troubleshoot, and welcome back to another video. In this quick video, I'll show you how to get the best FPS possible in the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 beta, and of course, the open beta that's coming up for PC. Of course, before starting this video, the absolute obvious things to mention, making sure everything's up to date, Windows, your graphics card, drive home, etc., and making sure you have as many background programs closed as possible. Beyond that, if you'd like a more in-depth Windows optimization guide, check the description down below for Windows 10, Windows 11, and NVIDIA optimization guides to get the most out of your PC. Other than that, I'll be firing up the game now to see how we can optimize the in-game settings, which is what this video is focusing on. Right, so I'm here on the main menu. All you have to do is head up to the settings in the top left here. Then we'll start on the graphics tab. Starting from the very top, set the display mode to either full screen borderless or full screen on Windows 11. Otherwise, if you're on Windows 10 for the best FPS, set it to full screen here. If you find yourself looking around too fast and when you click, you get tabbed out of the game, simply turn constrained mouse to game window on. Otherwise, leave this off. Display monitor is whatever you're looking at the game on currently, and the display adapter should be set to your highest performance graphics card. This is especially important if you're using a laptop with an integrated and a dedicated graphics card. Then, if you're playing in full screen mode, you're able to change screen refresh rate and display resolution here. Set the screen refresh rate to the highest option possible, in my case 165, for some reason it's down here. And the display resolution should be set to a compatible resolution for your display. Otherwise, if it's not officially supported by your display, things may end up blurry. Usually, this is as high as possible on your screen, in my case, 2K. Then, dynamic resolution should be set to off. This can improve FPS in some situations, though usually ends up in random spikes and random drops, and definitely really noticeable drops in quality, so have this off for the best experience. Then, aspect ratio, you can leave as automatic unless you'd like to customize it. VSync and VSync menu should both be turned off unless you're receiving screen tearing in the game. You can see two examples here. The left is with VSync off, where you're receiving screen tearing, and the right is where everything is normal. If yours looks like the left, simply turn on VSync gameplay, though have this off if you'd like better input latency and FPS, as this will lock it to a max of your screen refresh rate. Then, custom frame rate, you can usually leave this on unlimited, but for the best experience, set this to custom and click show more. Instead of here, we'll be setting the gameplay limit to the maximum possible, in this case, 300. Then menu frame rate limit, you can comfortably push down to 100 or even 60. And out of focus frame rate limit, you can leave it 30 or even lower. This last one comes into effect when you tap out of your game, and the lower this is, the more snappy windows will be while you're not tabbed into it. For me, I'll leave this on 5 and my menu on, say, 16. Scrolling down further, we can refresh shader optimization, though this is only if you're trying to fix issues. Then display gamma and brightness are your preference. Usually you'll leave this on 2.2 for monitors and 2.4 for TVs, as it says on the right here. Brightness is user preference. And then we get to focused mode. This was introduced in Vanguard. Essentially, if you turn this on, your other monitors will turn black while you're tabbed into the game. This is an unnecessary feature that can cause you to lose some FPS, so leave this off and instead just minimize things that could be distracting you, like videos, Discord, etc. If you have multiple monitors. Then, high dynamic range. Set this to automatic. If you have an HDR display, the game will look richer and brighter. And if you don't, it'll look pretty much normal. You can turn this off and there may be a minimal change in FPS, though there shouldn't be anything too crazy. HDR calibration is if you have this set on. Then we'll apply the settings here, and we'll move across to quality at the very top. Inside of here, we'll leave it as recommended, and we'll start customizing this. Render resolution, we can leave at the maximum for our screen, in my case, 2K. Then we have NVIDIA DLSS, NVIDIA NIS, and AMD FSR. All of these will be set to off if you choose to use AMD Fidelity FX CAS. This works on NVIDIA and AMD graphics cards and will give you a sharper looking game. I'd recommend leaving this on and setting it to around 75-80% to 80 sharpening, which will give you much better visibility, especially because we simply cannot turn anti-aliasing off. This makes everything look blurry and when we eventually get the ability to turn this off, likely when the full game releases, the game will look a lot sharper like you don't need glasses to play it. Having AMD Fidelity FX CAS turned on should minimize the blurring effect here. For AA, set this to SMAA T2X. Filmic SMAA adds a bit more blur and weird things like that, making it harder to see. 
Now, you can turn off Fidelity CAS and instead use DLSS if you have it available. If you mess around with the DLSS settings here, the higher you push this up on this list, the more FPS you can expect, so return here when you're done optimizing the rest of the options. If you have this set on, I'd say set it to quality if anything, and set the sharpening to around 70 to 80% to once again cancel out the anti-aliasing effect. Though, though I think it's turned off entirely, maybe not, it could be locked on to a specific thing, not entirely sure. NVIDIA image scaling, this is more if you're running a weird resolution on your monitor, and it's sort of a DLSS-like effect where you can gain FPS, though not as much as you can with DLSS. DLSS only works with RTX supported graphics cards, but NIS works everywhere. It's sort of a baby version of DLSS. AMD FSR works absolutely everywhere, and once again can gain you some extra FPS, much like DLSS, but you don't need an RTX graphics card at all. Anyways, that's a lot of detail for some simple settings that you should return to at the very end of optimizing everything else. Then, nearby LOD should be set to high. This is the quality of nearby objects. This should always be set to high for the best gameplay experience. Then, details and textures. I'd recommend setting text resolution relative to your graphics card. Looking around these settings here, you can see on the bottom right, a chart is changing, showing me what VRAM it'll use in my graphics card. Set this to normal or low if you're not entirely sure. Otherwise, if you have a higher-end graphics card like a 3080 or 2080, you can comfortably set this to high and forget about it. Then, anisotropic filtering. It really has no effect on your FPS. You can leave this on high or even normal. Particle quality once again has a minimal effect on your PC, but you can set this to low for a bit better performance, especially in certain situations where your game may randomly seem to lag out. Bullet impacts and spray really have a CPU impact and a sort of more user preference than anything. You can leave this on and forget about it. Shader quality you should set to low, and you can rerun shader optimization if you choose to. You can raise this later, but low is good enough here. Tessellation leave this as off, and turn texture streaming off as well. This basically allows us to download higher quality assets while we're playing the game, but you should have this off just for better, more consistent gameplay experiences. Same for streaming quality, set this to low, and forget about it as well. Then, scrolling down to shadow and lighting, we should set everything here down to low, except for shadow map resolution. If you push this to very low, some of the shadows become really blocky and annoying, maybe even distracting from normal gameplay, so leaving it on low is pretty much as low as I would go, unless you really need some extra FPS. Everything else here you should set to low. So, spot shadow quality, low, particle lighting, low, ambient occlusion will set to off, and screen space reflections once more to off. Then we have caching for spot shadows and sun shadows. If you have a good amount of RAM in your PC, like 8 to 16 or even more, you should have these on for better, more consistent gameplay and FPS. Then finally, post-processing effects. NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency, this is a bit of an iffy one. This is all down to your PC and your configuration. You could gain input latency or lower your input latency depending on your current setup. If you have a really powerful graphics card and a less powerful CPU, then set this to on plus boost. If you have a normal CPU and a normal graphics card, you can set this to on. Otherwise, leave it off. This is your user preference. Usually leave it on on plus boost if you have a much more powerful graphics card. That's really all I have to say about that. Then to put on your glasses while you're playing the game and actually see what's going on, turn off depth of field, world motion blur, weapon blur, and set film grain all the way down to zero. By doing all of these, you'll get much better visibility in-game, allowing you to see and react better and faster. It's not necessarily going to result in better performance, but it definitely will make a huge impact on gameplay. Then, apply settings. Finally, the view tab. You should set your field of view to whatever you want. Don't listen to other guides that tell you, lower it for better FPS. Set this to whatever works best for you as it really comes down to your experience in the game. Usually 110, 120 is what I play at, but set this to whatever you want. This is where FPS doesn't matter. This is all about gameplay. ADS field of view, once again, user preference. If you experience stuttering when you're zooming into a weapon, you can set this to independent, which will leave field of view as normal, and that should minimize FPS drops while you're scoping in and scoping out, etc. All of these here are your user preference, and that's really about it.
Once again, when you're done optimizing everything and you get in game, the settings that you should mess around with are these ones here. DLSS, NIS, AMD FSR, and Fidelity FX CAS. If you're unsure, leave FX CAS on, set to 75%, and move on with your life. Anyways, apply settings, then we can head back, and that's really it. So thank you all for watching this relatively quick video. Once again, if you'd like better performance out of your PC, check the description down below for optimization guides to get the best out of it. Thank you all for watching. My name is Techno here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.